Okay, now the reaction of an acid anhydride with an alcohol to make an ester. Now, you need to keep in mind that acid anhydrides are chemically more stable than the esters and the amides. So you can use acid anhydrides to make either of those two groups. But you cannot use acid anhydrides to make acyl chlorides, since acyl chlorides are less stable. So make sure you're aware of the order of stability. You can also use acid anhydrides to make carboxylic acids if you want. They're interconvertible. Now, when you do use an acid anhydride to make an ester or an amide, it is wise to be using a symmetrical anhydride. Otherwise, you don't know what products you're going to get. You're going to get a mixture. So I would strongly suggest that when you do these mechanisms, keep them symmetrical. You don't want lots of products. That would not be very good chemistry. So I'm just going to give us a very simple acid anhydride. And we're going to react it with an alcohol to make an ester. Now it doesn't really matter what alcohol you use, but just so that we'll have some different groups, and I can't ask you what you want today, um, I'm going to use ethanol because I like to keep it simple. You guys know that. And these, ten, these reactions tend to work out best in the presence of an acid. You can use purity. They don't work so well when you leave them neutral, but if you do add a little acid or a little base, they tend to work out a lot better. If you are using an acid, make sure you're using an oxy acid so that you don't have a competing nucleophile in the solution. That could be a lot of trouble for you. So I'm using sulfuric acid here. Now, I hope you remember, sulfuric acid is a really strong acid. So acid-based chemistry is going to be favorable here. And you want to think of the best place to put this proton. Now, I want you to think about it for a second. You've got a number of different oxygens that you can give it to. If you give it to the alcohol oxygen, that's it. There's no resonance delocalization of the charge. If you give it to the oxygen between the two carbonyl carbons, again, that's it. There is no resonance delocalization of the positive charge. But if you give it to one of the carbonyl oxygens, we can draw resonance structures. So this is actually where we want to put the proton. And we've seen this happen before with other carbonyl groups. I hope you remember that whenever we've had a strong acid, we protonate the carbonyl oxygen. All right, so after we've protonated that carbonyl oxygen, we are going to be able to draw resonance structures. And I'm going to draw those for you right now. There are going to be three of relevance. Analysis of differences of situation. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm a little cramped right there. Thank you. You naughty thing. Perhaps, but he is respectable. Okay, and so then there's this HSO4 minus. It's a spectator. And again, it's got resonance delocalization of the negative charge, so it's not that great of a nucleus. Now, I can break that pi bond between the carbon and the oxygen. to show resonance on that carbonyl group. There's the positive charge on that carbonyl carbon. Sorry, that positive charge looks a little sad, but that's what it is. And I've got one more. I'm going to try to squish it on here. That oxygen that is bridging the two carbonyl carbons can also act as an electron pair donor to that carbonyl carbon to help suck up some of that positive charge it's experiencing and move that charge onto the oxygen. Now this is the most minor of the three resonance contributors, but it is a contributor. And so we've got these three resonance structures. That's the best corresponding conjugate acid-base pair. So that's where we want to, of course, put the protons, so we've got the best resonance. Now you could have put it on the other carbonyl oxygen. It would have made no difference. If this were an asymmetrical acid anhydride, again, it would have made no difference which oxygen got the proton. That's the whole problem. So you, it really doesn't matter. And you want to make sure you put it in such a way that we only have one product. That's why we're using the symmetrical acid anhydride. Now I'm going to redraw the acid anhydride on the next side. Okay, so we've got one of our three resonance structures here. I'm going to redraw it for us. Caroline 
And as I've told you many times in class, you can add the nucleophile to any one of those resonance structures and end up with the same product as a result of that addition. And again, in this case, we're going to be adding an alcohol. The alcohol by itself is not that great of a nucleophile, but now that I've protonated that carbonyl oxygen, I've activated that carbonyl group toward nucleophilic substitution because now it's a really awesome electrophile. So I can add my nucleophile and I break that pi bond and I'm going to make that tetrahedral intermediate as a result of all of this. So once I've added that nucleophile, I want to be able to draw this tetrahedral intermediate. Okay, there it is. And as you can see, uh, I've accounted for all the charges that, oh, I've done something bad right there. Sorry, this should not be that way. There should be a hydrogen there. I did a bad job. So that one pair should be a bond to the hydrogen. Okay should have a positive charge for this tetrahedral intermediate since it's an acid. Now, what we're going to do at this point is a proton transfer to the solvent. And the solvent in this case is ethanol, the alcohol, of course. Alcohols tend to be liquids. So I'm going to use the oxygen as my base to pick off this proton and give my electrons back to the oxygen. Now, after I've done that, let me draw everything. This is the way it should have looked on the last slide to begin with. Hope you can see a little better this time. Okay, so that was the proton transfer to solvent. Now we're going to do the proton transfer from solvent. And again, you don't even need to draw this intermediate out if you write PTTS on the arrow. But I didn't want anybody to be confused when I wasn't there as to where things were going, so I bothered to draw it out. Now we are going to be trying to reform the pi bond to this particular carbonyl carbon right here that I've highlighted in red. And so we need to make sure we have the best leaving group possible. The leaving group we want to kick out is this guy right here. And so I want to protonate the oxygen that's attached to this red carbon. So it's actually going to act as the base to pick up the proton from the solvent and we'll give electrons back to the oxygen in this process so that we can make the best leaving group possible. So after our proton transfer through solvent, Get ourselves here. Of course, there's some more alcohol down here. But now we've got a really good leaving group. And you can either use the OH or the OCH2CH3 oxygen to form the pi bond. It doesn't matter which of them does it since we're going to have resonance delocalization anyway. But I'm going to show it from the OH guy. And it'll come in and reform the pi bond, and of course you can't have five bonds to carbon, so we kick out the best leaving group. Now as a result of that, we end up with a carboxylic acid, yay. It's kind of a byproduct of these reactions, and I hope that you remember that from when we were in lab, we had to neutralize the carboxylic acid that was formed. But anyway, there it is. 
The other product that we have is a protonated ester. Now, this protonated ester has resonance delocalization of the positive charge, so I'm going to show that to you on the next slide over. So I'm going to redraw it a little bit differently, but it's the same thing. Just kind of moving things around a little bit. Next to being married, a girl likes to this is the predominant res or er, I did not draw that right again. Okay. I got a little ahead of myself, but there we are. We've got that proton back on there. It's sort of that lone pair of electrons. And it will have delocalization of that positive charge. So you break the pi bond between the carbon and the oxygen there. Whatever of that kind made before you, you have an affection of And the positive charge would actually end up on the carbonyl carbon as a result of that. And what will become of the solid indeed I do not? And I cannot bear to think of Charlotte Lucas being mistress of this house. Okay. And the other oxygen, the one that's attached to the ethyl group, also has lone pair electrons, so it also can be an electron pair donor to this carbonyl carbon. So those again are our three resonance structures for this protonated version of the ester. So now what we need to do is deprotonate it. And typically you would add a base to do this, but we're just going to use the solvent molecule that we have, which is our alcohol, to do this. And again, I can't redraw all of those on the same slide, so I'm just going to show it from one of them. But you could do this from any one of those three. Any one of those three resonance structures is absolutely fine to show this one. So, here's my solvent, the alcohol. You are too good. Your sweetness and disinterestedness. And it will act as a base to remove the proton and I give electrons back to the oxygen. And as a result of that, you make the ester. Hooray! The more I see of the world, the more I Again, just to reiterate, I did use an acid anhydride to do this chemistry with this alcohol. If you are going to be making an acid anhydride react to make a different carboxylic acid derivative, it has to be an ester or an amide that it would make because those are chemically more stable than the acid anhydride. Do not think that you can make an acyl chloride from an acid anhydride directly. You can't. The only way you could is if you literally took the acid anhydride first to a carboxylic acid and then reacted the carboxylic acid with thionyl chloride to get at the acyl chloride. You cannot do it directly because it's chemically less stable than the acid anhydride. So don't try and do something like that. But you can make esters and amides by this method. The only difference with the amide is you would be using the amine and you would need to use the amine to deprotonate the tetrahedral intermediate so that the um, nitrogen group wouldn't be the leaving group anymore. But I think most of you should be able to handle that on your own. Again, you should look at that and make sure before you move on.